I put auto, auto, audio chat on the Zoom. Does the audio come across okay for everyone on Zoom? Uh, it's okay yes. for me. It's right. fine for me, Lisa Copenheffer. I can hear you. Okay, good, good. All right, so normally when we have a block meeting on the eve of month of the year, we have an agenda and we want to pass off information that you can take it up to your zone and then help you hold no meeting. Um, but this November, I think towards the end of the year, as far as October, um, we just like to do away with the agenda and really get the feedback from block captain about what's working in the program and then the areas that we can improve on. So this is really more time to kind of let us know what would be helpful. I know that um, recently uh, we got block caps to close those and that folks have been telling us that there's difficulty in holding hybrid meetings. And so the city um, offered up council chambers to help block caps to home hold zone meetings in a hybrid manner. Um, and so some feedback in that way would be helpful. Um, and then you can also talk about the information you're getting, how helpful that is in order to educate your zone. Um, I got some input from Dorothy Venter who said that, you know, she couldn't make it today. Um, and, um, but we'd just like to hear from you. And this, so, so the hour is dedicated to any questions you may have. And certainly we have first responders here as well that can field any questions uh, relating to emergency preparedness or just how the program is operating. I have two words. Uh, one of the hallmarks of the uh, block captain program has been to get the views from the residents on how to make this uh, community safer. And, and what's important here is that we got the feedback and we did something about it. Exit routes, uh, canyons, and we're doing something about it. We're going to use the same technique here. The program was successful. We got an award, but we can't sit back on that. We have to make the program even better. We have some areas that are pretty obvious, such as how can we get better attendance on the zone meeting. So we're soliciting ideas from you. How can we make the program better? And what can, more importantly, turn around and act upon those suggestions? So we want to hear from you. Well, I unfortunately feel that there's a huge amount of apathy in the community. And I cover up until last night, some, uh, some family was kind enough to take one of my, one of my five remaining zones. I'm going to give up another zone and keep two. And then after all of that and all the time and effort I put into getting hold of people by letters, by email, and phone calls. I had nobody show up other than block So I feel that we have to take the information to the residents, either to keep our Marty Man with blue newsletters and sending stuff in the mail versus trying to get people to participate. Mm. Because getting people to show up is, just doesn't work. I, I think that you're right that it's hard to get people to show up and that we have to look at what's effective as far as communication goes. I think, and I talked with Kay and Dorothy, but if I disagree with what you think, Kay, please let me know. Uh, I, I think we're saturated. I think we need to basically back off. The continuous bombardment is pushing people into a state of mind where they just delete and move on. Um, and I personally feel that way about many activities that I've engaged in. It's like I have to really pick what is critical and what is distinctively separate from the barrage of information that I get on a daily basis. So I think if we were to do something distinctly different, like take a half hour before the annual meeting for people who are new or people who have particular questions about the block capture program, let it show 
show up a half hour early, have several of us there address it. It's an event that people are already going to. Um, I really miss the women's committee meetings where we used to actually get together on a every other year basis. That I think brought people together for the social benefit as well as the informational benefit. And we certainly don't seem to have that. And I, as much as Zoom is a nice tool in some respects, I find my attention span, which should be limited on a good day. You know, if I'm looking at a screen and something else is going on, it's like I just don't get the content. I, I find it's not necessarily hybrid. In fact, I'm here today because I value the opportunity to actually engage without having to rely on the screen. But I think people are just a little overwhelmed with the continuous information and having a zone meeting that doesn't impart some new distinctive and ultra important information. We've been doing this for years. I think it's well recognized and I'm so impressed by the, the recognition that we've gotten and, and the work that Arlene and Jean have done. But I think we need to just kind of look back at what do the constituents want who are relying on us. I mean, when I signed up for the block captain, I signed up for an emergency. I didn't sign up for a continuing obligation and, uh, you know, desire to communicate with my immediate neighbors. If they had a question, if there was something important, they sent to me directly or I go to them directly. But I don't want to keep going to them about stuff that is, you know, time-based rather than information-based. Yes, uh, you're exactly right. I wasn't meaning that we should bombard people with info. Oh, so we are. I just think that instead of having no meetings, we should, you know, it's time for a zone meeting, we should just update information. I mean, <clears throat> I also want to say how wonderful it is that we got an award, and thank you to Jean and Arlene and everybody. But um, I actually talked to a couple of people last night. I talked to Lisa Kulpenhefer, and I think she had some good Maybe we'll add what she had to say. But somebody else that I talked to said that, <clears throat> that you know, for residents who have lived here a long time, they they had their fill. So, and which is obvious because last night we had new residents who showed up. And somebody only lived here a month, somebody lived here right. three months. So I think it's important for block houses on a continuous basis to just to get out to their new residents and the new home. And I'll make sure that they've got their binder, they're up to date, you know who to call if they have a problem, and so forth. I think that's, that's right. And I think doing the after 20 hour meeting is a good idea. Um, so I don't know how some of the other people feel about it, but um, I think you're, you're right that when there's something important to be said, <clears throat> then we can send stuff out. Sorry, getting my morning voice. Also, I think, Ian, you know, every once in a while we do a survey. So, you know, every, maybe every, every other year we do a survey and, you know, see what responses we get. You know, we follow the responses to the last survey. Yeah, I don't know how often we would do that kind of thing, but, you know, at least we get some kind of feedback and people don't have to leave their home to do it and stuff. You know? I mean, I've just found from being in fires, and I don't know how locally here with rolling hill fires, but, you know, with other you know, fires, and, you know, unless it's happening to you at the time, people just kind of, you know, they have to be, they have to step up and be grown up and take care of be responsible for themselves. The most important thing I feel is, yes, it's really important to protect your home from a fire, but the most important thing in the is just to get out, you know, and just for us to really know our evacuation process. You know? So, and I think we lost, I know Lisa was talking about that last night when we spoke that we lost Kind of that was the theme of last night's zone meeting, but because we had technical difficulties, like um, Deborah was going through the backpack and blah blah blah, and you know that was just kind of stalling time. But um, you know we didn't talk a really super long time about evacuation. I think people are concerned with how do I get out? How do I know to get out? You know, the, one of the, the chief did, did um, kind of she did talk about how to get out, but I think. You know, really specifically for your area, how to get out of where to go. But again, you don't know that until an event happens, and you know which side of the hill to get out out to. Um, to do it anyway. And I would say people are getting it. I think people are getting it. I think they're reading information, um, and, and I think people have it's a choice whether you're going to do it or not. But I think people are getting it and doing it because if you walk around, it's a lot different than it was two years ago. You look at the property, if you look at the Rolling Hills Community Station or the roadway, look at the zoom on the right now, um, yeah, leaning out the trees and the easement down. So I think people are getting it. Um, 
think it's a good thing that we keep meeting. This is when the nation might come in and then we can disseminate, but I just think, um, I think we're getting it. I really do. I, I keep repeating myself, but I, I, it's so much different than it was two years ago. Even when we had that huge windstorm last year, it was so much worse. And there was less footage on the street. So that, yeah, most people pronounce it too. Now you could ask Artie, it was like a night day because people took care of what they need to take care of for fire prevention. But they forget it. So I think we've really got two different capacitors in here. And we have focused, I think, beautifully on fire. You know, we know we get up and express each day. The fire people work with us on like heart evacuation, you know, and we all know the risk here, what we need to do. And if you go out, you're not coming back in. So when you need to take care of at home, where you are disabled. You know, in their homes, where we need to help them. I think probably where uh, we can spend some more time is on earthquake preparedness because um, our neighbors need to be well prepared for that. We've been told when we did those block captain meetings and all our zone meetings uh, 10 years ago that um, we had a fire at that point, and then, like you said, like you said, all of a sudden everyone was interested. And we had great participation in zone meetings all over the city after that 2009 fire. And what became really clear from fire and our um, local law enforcement is we are in a secluded area. If we have an earthquake, how can we communicate right now with all of our neighbors to be well prepared with food, water, batteries, you're probably not going to have electricity, um, all those kinds of things, and I think that's something we can really be talking about to our neighbors to be well prepared because if you can't get off the hill and you can't get gas, by the way, you keep your gas tank at least half full all the time, that's another big preparedness. So um, I think that's an area we've done such a great job in fire. I'd like to see us maybe circle back and make sure all of our neighbors are prepared for an earthquake and sheltering in place in this city for some period of time that could be, you know, lengthy. I don't know if our fire department people would like to comment on that. Rolling hills versus other areas if there is a major earthquake. Yeah, I think you got a, you got a special situation here where you're kind of isolated. And the best thing to think is that, that if you are having problems here, the whole system is going to be overwhelmed. So like, hey, we, do these, we do these drills every year and even inside the fire department. We're asking ourselves, your families, do you have supplies at home if your family had to be at home for several days or a week? And a lot of guys aren't prepared even inside the emergency service zone. So the best thing you can do is like insurance, just go spend some money on some water and some batteries, some extra food, some medicine, just for just to prepare yourself because in the event that everybody needs emergency services right now, and this is the this is probably a, a unlikely area to get hit real hard because it's all Big properties, one story ranch style houses, and a lot of them have already survived earthquakes before the brand new construction is retrofit. So, you're probably going to have a place to stay. Probably not going to have electricity unless you have a generator. You might have the water shut off. So, having a little bit of extra water and some food and medicine for people that need it is just, and, be, and plan on staying in your house because if the trees are fall across the road and can't get in or out, you're not going to have people being able to respond to you. You're not going to be able to get out. So, is addressing your point, there is a there is a value to having kind of a face contact with your immediate neighbors and having you guys block captains. Is if we have an earthquake, there's a survey system that every fire station does. It drives around just to get a lay of the land, see what kind of damage or no damage has happened to these different regions in LA County. We report back, and if there's no communications, if the block captains know and your street knows that you guys are taking it upon yourselves to report to the emergency system. Imagine what an emergency looks like when it's a disaster. Little emergencies are just going to have to be solved by you guys. There's a CERT program that the LA County Fire Department does, the Citizen Emergency Response Team. It seems like they give the best training you could possibly imagine for this exact scenario, fires and earthquakes specifically. So that's that's a, that's what we have in place to have people that represent. Like, and we know we're looking for a best a CERT. That's who we're going to ask. They're, they know what questions we want from them real quickly. They give us information and we report it back to our headquarters. So 
just be prepared, start thinking small, and then collect yourself a little emergency supplies stash and, and, and anticipate on no communications, no contact, no help. And you probably will start preparing yourself the right way in, in reality. What it is. So, excuse me, guys. Sorry to interrupt. Um, let's move to the next one. So, we're going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to get up. And we're going to exit throughout here. And if you can look to your right and go to the parking lot, please. We'll see you at 1030. So for everyone on Zoom, if you guys can all also actively participate, and if you can find somewhere in your house that will be safe for you to find a place where you can take cover and hold next till 10:30, and we'll return at 10:30. Can you hear me? Well, they're all gone. I guess we should be getting under our desks. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> they're doing a drill, like as though there were an earthquake, and we're supposed to take cover as well, right? Mm. Or did I misunderstand that? No, that's it. It's the Great okay. American Shake Up or Shake Out or whatever. It's the earthquake drill. Thank you both. I'm just going to hang it. on here then. Yeah, we can. Seemed like we were all under our desks. <laughs> It'll be our little secret. That's right. That's right. It's nice and quiet. wonder, are all of you hearing everything uh, well? I'm having a problem, and maybe it's just me. I hear well enough. There's just a lot of background noise. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't hear everything either. So all right. I'm, I'm just <laughs> waiting till, till we get the, uh, the written version of the meeting. Oh, there they are. Oh, yeah, they're outside. Doesn't seem like going outside is the best because they're if there are power lines that are falling and branches that are falling. <laughs> what about those trees we were just talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It'll just be us left. That's right. <laughs> We got to stick together. That's right. That's right. Have you guys all had your zone meetings? No. Um, tonight we're going to attend. Yeah, tonight. tonight's mine too. Okay. Yeah, I sat in. Mine was last night, and um, yeah, so that's part of my comment. It it could have definitely been better. I I felt a little bad. I you know, email blasted everybody and, and took around notes to everybody. And I did get new people from my zone in attendance. And I feel a little bad because I just think it, it was kind of all over the place in terms of the meeting. So why? How many, how many people did you get? You know, I don't know. Cause I did it. I was on zoom. So I'm not sure how many people were there in attendance in my zone. I think there it was me and basically three new people from my zone. All the other people who live in my zone, I, there's two people who live here that are going to be attending tonight. So in total, and I've, I cover two zones, all of the 
the top from Chuck Wagon Eastfield on Chuck Wagon all the way down to Chesterfield on Chuck mm -hmm. Wagon and then all of Bowie Road. So that's quite a few houses. So I didn't get much in the way of attendance. So yeah, my feeling is the whole apathy thing. I just think a lot of people who've lived here just feel like they're not going to hear anything new. And frankly, I don't think there was much new shared, you know. Are they still was, giving out the old same kits? Yeah, and just, you know, I mean, you know, I, I guess I should be, I, I, I'll tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um I just feel like everybody you know is working or busy during the day so they get to these meetings and they want it short and sweet it's almost like I wish we would do more of a bullet point type presentation you know not so much like talking like she literally went through everything in a, an emergency backpack oh gosh which, you know, nobody, I mean, everybody knows what's in an emergency. At this point, I think most people know what's in an emergency backpack and it's very easy to find, find it on Amazon or whatever. Right. So that should just be a sentence, not like 10 minutes of going through it item by item. And I, the letter, my understanding was that these zone meetings were really going to focus on evacuation. And I feel like that was just hardly touched on. And and the one question that was asked by one of the new people from my zone, that was her question. How will I know if something's gone wrong? Like how how will I know that there's a fire? You know? So the people want to know just like that, really basic, like how am I gonna be informed kind of stuff, you know? They're back. No. Oh well. So anyway, I, that's what I. <laughs> that's helpful though. That's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry, I know you want to speak, um, but there's a captain that's gonna leave quickly. So okay. we'll, yeah. So we'll do the captain first, and we'll Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. So uh, Captain Captain Hasegawa, and then I know Kathleen and um, Miss Coleman Heifer. You want to get to your questions if you will. I know Captain Hasegawa has to leave a little bit early. I know he didn't want to say hi or, or say something to the community before he goes. So if you get unmute and put your camera back on, have to help go if you have to stop really quick. Captain Hasegawa, are you there? Thank you. 
last window. Do we kind of know it's from our example we were affected by 2009 fire? We had a regular window, and we had a door with the temperature. And, you know, the flames came up, and uh, the door was fine, but the outside of the non-temperate glass sat They were right next to each other. So that was sort of a um, reinforcement of what we noticed. Great. Great. Kathleen? Um, hi, wait, can you still see me? I just lost my, um, okay, there yeah. I am. Um, yeah, no, I just had a couple comments um, from the earlier points, which is, I agree there's a lot of apathy. Like when I sent out um, multiple emails to alert people to the meeting on the 13th, I think I got five responses from, and that was from three houses and they were the people that I knew the best. Um, so there is this feeling of, I think, kind of either being overwhelmed by the information. Thinking back to the early days when I had like a party on the patio with food and wine, people showed up for that. Um, <laughs> of course, that's, that's not happening now. Um, and it was a way to pull the community together. I, I do think, and I and I'm, uh, would like to ask the first responders this, that a drill would focus people on and make people more aware of where we're going to get the bottlenecks are, and the fact that they probably, a lot of people have not put together the, the, the bin with, if you have to get out really quickly, you need a bin that is ready to go. And I think if we got people to go through a real drill where they were involved, they would feel that A, they didn't have that thing ready to go if they don't. And two, there'd be a reality check on what it's like to try to get out that, that locked gate. Um, you know, where are we gonna get the bottlenecks and how are we gonna hear the first responders? If they're telling us where to go, where are they gonna be? How are people gonna be aware of that? So just making it real is my comment the nature i'm, I'm tom your, your local firefighter here Hi. the nature of emergency sure is that you can't really predict anything about well, that just in your scenario if there's a wind event an earthquake what if you have this plan and then you get to the top of the road and there's a giant eucalyptus tree or five that are blocking your way out well there goes your great plan so it's really just a you can be prepared at your house to have your house be like a little fortress and very hardened and ready for just about anything. That's that's a great plan to start with. Have good relationships with your neighbors so that at your house, the chances that everybody's house on the block is just very, very small. So you have some place at least you can go and, and stay for a second. But that's the nature of an emergency is that all these things are good plans, a good, good idea getting out of the community. If there's a fire, of course, it's leave early that's that's the best bet but if you're going to stay at your house make sure that you have done the pre preparing of your own property for your own safety like i could say that when she's mentioning there's windows that you get right that's not something that i would enforce as a, a brush clearance guy but you do whatever you can for your own property be prepared as much as you can yourself but don't count on your great evacuation plan always being exactly what is you know be flexible try to stay calm know that your house is probably your best sanctuary uh, the sheriffs will help you get in there and get out just you know have, have a have a sense of what's my secondary escape room what's my what's the safest location as close to my house as i can think of that there's a course stable that you know in a big clearing that might be the best place to go i, I don't know but so there's a lot of contingency things nothing is guaranteed to work out exactly as i'm saying this is a great community for this kind of thing because it really is Self-contained, on self-contained. So there's big property, big flat spaces. Everybody has a one-story house. And then earthquake, I don't see a whole lot of damage potential. I do see the possibility of falling trees. Or fires could start, but just have that sense of what, what, where's the safe part of my property on my street? If I can't get out, where, where will I stay? What will I do? Thank you, Tom. Um, Lisa, we'll come back to you. Uh, Kathleen, you want to make some remarks? I know you have to go. Yes, uh, just a couple. I'll, I'll, uh, I was going to try to answer most of the collectively uh, some of the things that I hear and then tell you what the fire department, how we uh, integrate and work with you guys. So first off, let me tell you guys, thank you for attending this. Uh, the hats off to you guys to come together at 1030 in the morning on a weekday. 
it shows the involvement and the caring that you guys have for your community. So I applaud you guys for that. Uh, I'm Captain Hasegawa, I work for the Los Angeles County Fire Department. We have some of our coworkers uh, from Fire Station 56 sitting in the audience with you. And then we have uh, Mrs. Rosemary Vivero, who's you guys' community service uh, liaison. So. We, uh, if we can answer your questions and we don't want to take up too much of you guys' time, you can always uh, hit us offline and we'll try to adjust it. So I'm the community, um, I'm the public education captain as well as the CERT captain for the entire uh, county of uh, Los Angeles. So everything I hear you guys are saying, um, it sounds like you guys want an emergency preparedness class. And this is something that, uh, this is something that Rosemary and I can work on together. And then it can be performed by either myself uh, Rosemary, or maybe the local fire station. But um, case in point, I'm going to use Topanga because Topanga has an active um, uh, CERT team. So are, are any of you guys familiar with, I apologize for that. Are you guys familiar with CERT, Community Emergency Response Team? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the the thing is that Los Angeles County Fire Department covers 60 cities. So Rolling Hills is one of those 60 cities. And then we have 59 other cities that want the same thing that you guys have. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to encourage you guys, not only to train you guys, but after we train you guys, we, we're trying to do what is called like a force multiplier. So we have CERT where I think you guys are gonna have a class in January. We're trying to offer it to what's called battalions where Lomita has their uh, CERT team. They want their training. Uh, Rolling Hills wants theirs and then Rancho's Palace Verdes want it. Well, geographically, you guys are all in the same location. So we're trying to force, or not force, we're trying to encourage you guys to all get that training. Now, what's involved with that training is that allows you all as individuals to learn preparedness. Now, as Firefighter Wiley mentioned, out, you can't prepare for every scenario. We can say, well, these are things that you're gonna do, but then you also have what's called a human factor, right? So if there is a true emergency and something truly happens and it disasters, happen. We're all human beings. Many of us have family. So then folks, the first thing is first responders are going to check on their own family members to see if their family members are okay. You don't think that's going to happen. That's what happened with Woosley. When that happened, a lot of individuals, their houses are going to burn. So we're trying to teach you guys how to be self-sufficient for those 72 hours where the reality is we're not going to have 911 service. So you get that training, whether it be in CERT, and then we teach you guys about how much water to carry, whether you guys have three days for it. Um, some of it is just, you guys have a huge uh, brush um, area. So that's gonna be on you guys to have your adequate brush clearance because the things that's gonna affect uh, Rolling Hills is gonna be most likely either an earthquake or a brush fire. So uh, part of that emergency preparedness, we can go over how to go over ready, set, go, how to clear up you guys' area how to be self-sufficient for three days, how to shut off utilities, how to uh, take care and check on your neighbors because uh, within Rancho's Palos Verdes or that area, if there's a major earthquake, that's gonna suck up fire station 56, which is Rolling Hills. That's gonna take 106s, 6s, 2s, all, all of the stations there. So we're gonna deplete a lot of our resources quickly. And it sounds to me that you guys need more of an emergency preparedness class. And that can be simply simple as uh, taught maybe within two to four hours or so, and just prepare you guys on what you guys need to do to be self-sufficient because the reality is one major incident is gonna deplete us and we'll be gone for you know, quite some time. Uh, I hope that answered questions. And if there's, uh, Rosemary, if you had anything that you want to add to it, but um, if you guys have questions, definitely uh, let me know. And then we could try to get this so that we can all train you guys. But we would also want to train your neighboring cities as well, because if something happens to Rolling Hills, nine times out of 10, it's going to affect Ranchos, Palos Verdes, Palos Verdes, Lomita, so on and so forth. So we're trying to teach you guys, but we're also trying to teach as a whole versus saying, well, we just teach this city exclusively. And uh, because if something happens, it's gonna affect all you guys. Well, I wanted, uh, when I talked to uh, Captain Hasegawa and listening to what you guys were discussing in this meeting was very specific, you know, routes in and out of your, your area, specific locations, and that's why CERT is if you want to be part of a specific team and to go out there and help not just your community, but your neighbors. Emergency preparedness is we can individualize whatever in your community 
whether it's putting to helping you put together your emergency kit, you discuss mm -hmm. that, that there's uh, people who have certain disabilities, you know, and, and that's you're working with this, we have a, a database where we know who lives where, why isn't this person reacting? That's not part of CERT. CERT is a generalized uh, type of um, training. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is uh, Rolling Hills wants to, be, wants to be able to protect its community. And by doing that, that's where I would wanna meet with, with you as block captains and with the city and put together an exercise and training that we can go to each block meeting. Um, so it's not just a, you know, two hours to four hours, we can, you know, we can go out there train, we could give you information on some vendors, but we can help you put together your kits and give you direction on where to go in case something happens. So that's, that's what we want to encourage. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Uh, Lisa, Nicole, and then followed by Kay. Lisa, go ahead. Okay. Hi. Um, um, hi. I just can everybody wanted... hear me yet uh, on this video and at rolling at the community center there? Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you, everybody. Um, I wanted to make a few comments. Uh, let me think. Um, I really mm -hmm. like that idea of the educational programs coming from the experts. Mm -hmm. I feel very nervous as a block captain to mm -hmm. have my uh, community in my home and being responsible for educating my neighbors. Mm -hmm. I do feel comfortable presenting the information to them. Um, I don't mm -hmm. wanna make any mistakes. <laughs> And that's where my nervousness comes from. Um, I attended a block captain meeting in another zone and I continue to learn more information about being prepared myself. Um, the meeting was very straightforward and very fact, uh, factual. It was uh, a nice starter uh, for people to understand sort of the overall um, idea of taking care of your family in an emergency. But um, I agree with somebody who had spoke earlier, we don't want to bombard people with too much information. Um, but I think that what we are giving as zone as block captains to our zones, you know, should be um, information that's relatively new or updated. Um, I like the idea of having a once a year gathering for the new residents. Um, I feel as a block captain, I'm happy to host a meeting, inviting experts from the community to, to my home, but I feel very um, insecure about being the educator, if that makes sense. Um, I'm having a meeting next week, but I'm rethinking things as we go along um, in this discussion today. Um, I want my neighbors to come over and I want them to feel like their time was productive. The other thing that people were mentioning on this call is that time is limited. And so I saw how effective the hardening the home videos were within my zone. Everybody seemed to watch them. They thought they were simple, easy to understand. I'm wondering if the block captain program can create a video that is relevant to just rolling hills that can be shared with our, our participants of our community, our members in our community, I should say. And that may include, you know, clips from the fire department and first responders, everybody involved or not. But uh, a video goes a long way these days with people's time uh, constraints. Um, I think that I would love to host a meeting where first responders, you know, came to my home and we did CERT, edu CERT education and whatever education is available. Um, but that's sort of some of my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Lisa? I just wanted to briefly share we did our block meeting our our zone meeting last night and um 
we had of my, I have two zones I cover and of my two zones, the only people who came were new, new people to the area. Um, I have a couple people that live here that are going to be um, attending tonight. So out of my two zones, I probably only had about five house, households, six households with me included that attended. I think there's definitely an apathy and particularly with people who've lived here for a while. They, I think they've heard the information we keep presenting kind of over and over. The, new, the one thing I will say because the letter that we sent out said we were really going to talk about evacuation procedures. And I think that people were really interested in that. And as to like Kathleen's comment about doing a drill, I think that's a great idea. It seems like most of the people, when I was handing out letters and I've seen people when I'm out walking and all, they, they have two questions first and foremost about emergency. It's number one, how will I know in the case of a fire? Like how will I be contacted? That's their first question. And their second question is, you know, which way do we go to get out? Like what's the right procedure? I mean, for us down here on Chuck Wagon and Bowie and Chesterfield, we're, you know, dead end here. So do we go down and go towards Eastfield or should we go up and go towards the other gate on Crest? you know, that's a question that would be nice to know. And I do like the idea of the drill that Kathleen brought up just because I think we have to figure out something to kind of bring it home and, and actively get people involved as opposed to just listening, you know, to another meeting where it's just the same stuff kind of gets presented about the, the management of the brush, which is important, but I think everybody's heard that. And then, you know, last night they talked a lot about the emergency backpack, which is also something I think people, you know, are aware of having that. I, I think having a, a sheet of paper or handout with bullet points, making it super simple um, to, you know, Nicole's point, I think people are super busy. They've worked all day or they're busy all day. So they get to these meetings. We need to make it really easy to digest the information and 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 like a, a to-go sheet, something they could pin up and and know, okay, these are the five bullet points of what I need to do if there's an earthquake. These are the five, you know, shelter in place situation. These are the five bullet points of what I need to do for an evacuation. So anyway, that's just a couple comments. Um, you know, I mean, I think that we're doing a good job. Definitely the community's aware of it. Um, the need for this. And I just think we can fine tune it with things like maybe a drill. And I do like the video idea. So anyway, that's just my comment. Great points. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Hi. Hi, Elaine. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, I am. <laughs> good. Um, all these things that they're talking about are, you guys are a lot newer than a lot of us who've been around doing this for a long time, and these are the repetitions constantly going on. Um, I one, I mean, it's fine. It's just that I think even people attending, they're thinking, oh, guy, I've heard this 20 times that we're still discussing this thing, but they are making progress. I mean, in the last meeting we had, um, they were going to work on the evacuation things and that's what 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 they're working on right now and opening that the gate that was all explained Kathleen you you heard them explain what, what they were going to do as long as when we get ready to go uh, it's going to be open or we can't go because the fire department's coming in there I mean they did we did discuss that so it's not like it's just sitting there as an idea where the the city is working on this but I have one thing, Elaine, did you get the uh, piece of paper that I sent about yeah. what to do? Okay. Um, yeah. I I had seen that somewhere and I had mentioned it before and then it kind of, you know, nobody said too much about it. And then Judith, last time I saw her, she said, do you remember that paper, blah, blah, blah? I said, yeah, I, I just, I retyped it and everything. And so I'm sorry, I just took a picture of it for expedience um, that if you have, 15 minutes, uh, this is what you take. And it's a list. If you have a half an hour that you, before you think you have to get out, you do all those things, plus these are the new things. And then it goes all the way to 45 and to an hour. 
And it's just, it's very, I, or maybe just goes to 45. I think there's three, three or four sections. And I thought that was a really good thing when I read it. So I retyped it because it was kind of funny that it was cut out of a paper or something. And um, I have the thing. And if we, I think if people saw that, then they say, yeah, that's, that's me, real easy. I myself put it on the inside of one of my cupboard doors um, and just taped it. So, um, you know, we've had to do it before, at least I have, uh, but it would really help to remember, oh, that's right, we should take this. And as long as you can, if at first, you know, you get an, a, a, somehow they do it with a siren or something that we know it's happening, do you start, or you smell some smoke and hear some fire engines, think, let's get ready soon. So that's when you might have 45 minutes or an hour. But if it's like all of a sudden it's your next door neighbor's house or bushes that are on fire, you better grab a few things and be ready to just go. So if we could maybe do something about that, that paper, if you guys liked it, uh, and we could copy it and give it to people. That's all I have to say. Hey, hey, I'm having the um, sheet that you sent me printed, and I'll have distributed to the folks in the room. And then I'll have Asher put it in the chat function so the people on the Zoom can get it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nicole? Oh, I, I was already addressed. Thank you. I, I guess my hand's still up. Sorry. I'll try and take that off. <laughs> Like, 
I, I, I do feel like it is too intrusive for now. You know, we've got COVID. We've been, you know, the idea of dealing with something every couple of months. It's like, you know, okay, let's let's deal with what's relevant, what's important, not based on a timetable, based on what makes the most sense for the most people. You know, uh, I I just find that there's so little time um, that to go back to the same things over and over again. I love this format and this opportunity to exchange ideas, and I don't mean to be negative about the program. I'm just being honest about the intrusiveness on my time and the limitations that I have in terms of my own resources. So I'm grateful that I've got, you know, two great people like Kay and Dorothy, you know, that I can rely on. At the end of the day, if there was somebody new in my zone, I would take the time. But the people that I've been communicating with, they don't communicate back. They won't come to meetings. There's nothing that is incentivizing them to go to something that is, you know, uh, on the agenda. So at the end of the day, I think what we're seeing is evidence that uh, whether it's apathy or uh, being overwhelmed, we're getting through. I think Danny's right. We're making progress, but we have to recognize that there may be some people who just have a limited amount of time, energy, availability, and when we keep the uh, ongoing drift of the same information in the same format. I love the blue newsletter. You can read it at your, at your leisure. It's incredibly informative. It keeps people up to date. But sending out an email and inviting people to a, another meeting or a Zoom meeting, I, I think we have to look at the way people behave, and that speaks a lot. Your idea of a half hour before the annual meeting or during the annual meeting or something is Something different, something special that's going to kind of change the format and be tailored towards the people who actually need the information the most. I think what I hear over and over again is the new residents are the ones who are showing up. The established residents have heard it all before. Well, the thing we can do about this, you know, send a question to everybody prior to the meeting. Uh, and, uh, the frequency of the meeting maybe have once in uh, like two months or three months rather than, or, you know, multiple meetings. If you can dump with something, it's good. The thing is, send up a questionnaire. Hey guys, these are the agenda we need. Whether it's a uh, uh, press clearance or it's the law enforcement, so make it more interesting the meeting. And I think you probably see a lot more participation that way. Frankly, for personally, I think this is very, very helpful the knowledge. And you forget a lot of the things. Now, one of the things which we are not addressed is communication. How do we communicate? How do we let everybody know in case there is a catastrophe? So maybe two-way radios or satellite phones. We, we could bring you know, more technology into play. So that will be uh, energize people and make it more interesting. Uh, anyone on Zoom want to comment? Susan? Hi, everybody. Hey, I, I agree with Clint that, you know, I, I was on, been on two Zoom calls at once. So it, it is kind of taxing to try to, to do everything that we need to do. But I, I, my personal opinion, I think we should just put in the blue newsletter, ask people what they want, and then they'll tell us, and then we can figure out what the priorities are. Because, you know, that seems to be the most read vehicle for everybody. Just ask everybody, do you want, you know, semi-annual meeting? Do you want, how do you want to participate in learning how to um, evacuate, to take whatever is necessary, put together, a, a, you know, the backpack. I mean, we ju we're gonna have to stay ask them. They're just, they are, they are very complacent and, and I have the same issue. I mean, I'm, I'm, luckily I'm in 17A, but everybody's been around for a long time. I think we're probably some of the, the newer ones, but I just think that they feel like it's old news. And, and honestly, you know, maybe we do drills by, areas and make a block party out of it or something you know i mean they if somebody thinks it's a party they're going to come <laughs> you know anyone else thank you Susan. you're welcome okay I, i've got another survey question before we get to leah um as block captains do you feel that the city is supporting you adequately in your role as a 
Yes. I would like to have the city work with us on evacuation of animals, um, dogs or cats or horses. One of the things we really haven't touched on, in 2009 when the fire started, the gates closed. So no matter what you had at home or what pest or whatever, you couldn't get back in, which made sense. It was at night time. We had fire departments coming from all over the town. So I think we need to talk about that. Um, it's not just us, but what about those animals that we care about? So you're yeah. saying that you were home and you were trying to get back home to your animals? No, I didn't have that problem, but I heard a lot of it. Just that people, yeah. Say, yeah. people couldn't get back in. Yes, they did go once they asked that they couldn't get back in. So actually, that's a good communication. Right. But um, I would like maybe, Jean, as a thought, what, the, what should we be talking about for animals? You know, or dogs, cats, horses. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, well, Kenya, there, there is evacuation procedures for all cats. Yes, but it's, we're not working with the city yet on that. That's been working with the Caballeros and the association. But we think, from Caballeros, that, that we need to probably work with the city more because this is a very specialized city that we live in because of the equestrian and animal atmosphere. So that's my answer to your question. Sure. Okay. I know we're coming towards the end of the hour, and um, Councilman Reverse wants to make comments. No. I'm so sorry, Leah. That's okay. I'm so sorry. No um, all right. So I, I got last few questions for you. Um, as law comes, are you? Do you feel like you're being supported by the first responders? I'm putting you guys on the spot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Very much. Yes. 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 Perfect, perfect. Um, do you feel like you're supported by your lead law captain? Oh, yes. 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 Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, good. Thank you so much for your feedback. Now, before anyone goes, I just want to um, tell you what um, Dorothy Venter has said about the program um, and she uh, is taking a trip and she couldn't be here, but I certainly want to make sure that um, I let you know what she said. Um, so if you just bear with me for a second here. So, Elena, are we going to continue having meetings every other month? I think what we're going to do is I'm going to work with the lead law to get your feedback and then we're going to digest it. Because it's October and I'm about to tell next January to kind of figure out what would be best for all of us. And your so your feedback is really important. And I certainly do not want any volunteers to feel burdened. I want you to feel supported. I want you to have the resources to do what you volunteer to do. I mean, I don't want to lose you, <laughs> first and foremost. So I don't know yet, Judith. I think that, you know, Jean and Arlene will have to talk about what sort of changes that we can make to kind of help everyone and address some of the comments that I've heard today. Well, if it's not every, every other month, but maybe quarterly and we Yeah, let, let, us, let us kind of take a look at that and, and see. Um, okay, so um, I have one last thing. Sure. If, if, if you had some issues that you feel uncomfortable talking to the group about, you can write a letter and send it to Elaine about what kind of improvement. Uh, should be made to the bond captain programs. So don't feel that this is the end of feedback from the bond captain. This is just, I think, the beginning. I'm yeah, it is just the beginning of this, and we're going to do a lot of more check-ins. You know, I think that when we re-communicated the program a couple of years ago, it was really trying to get our foothold into something of a structure. You know, so I, I can understand Clint's point about Hey, maybe um, meeting frequently. But as time goes on, as we all know our roles better as each but each other better and get to know the issues, um, we can certainly make adjustments as we go. And so continuously we're gonna get your feedback. As well as the first responders and how we manage things, you know. Um, so I want to say this Dorothy Venter had um, sent some feedback and she said regarding zone meetings, the hybrid meeting held at City Hall did make it much easier for all the block counties. However, I think the Zone 15 meeting held at Clint a couple of years ago was probably more successful as far as 
attendance go. So looking back, I think one of our most successful projects was staying in touch with and passing on information to residents during the COVID pandemic. This was the kind of emergency that none of us envisioned when we became block county. Our input was much appreciated by most residents. Um, I want to say that you and Elaine have gone out of your way to be helpful to block counts and make us feel appreciated. And that was her feedback. So thank you very much for your time. I certainly like to keep the meeting under an hour. And so as I said, that um, the lead block counts and I will get together and take your feedback. Um, and then we will get together again. We'll talk about what the plan is for next year. Thanks so much. Thank you. 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 Yeah. I know. 